Hello, Honors Math 2. Uh, let's refresh our memory on the inverse of a function. These are some notes, day 3. If a function is 1 to 1, then it has an inverse. To each x, if the function is 1 to 1, to each x in the domain of f, there's exactly one y in the range, because it's a function. And then to each y in the range of f, there's exactly one x in the domain because it also goes the other way. That function is 1 to 1. This mapping, this correspondence from the range of f back to the domain of our function f is called the inverse function of f. Remember this notation for an inverse. f inverse is used to denote the inverse of f. Remember, the inverse we saw this first semester. Remember, the inverse of a function undoes the operations of a function. So if I have a function f of x equals 2x minus 5, we found f inverse of x. Can you reverse the operations of that function to find the inverse? Remember, we said what's the opposite of plugging in a number, multiplying by 2, and then subtracting 5? Doing the opposite operations in reverse order, multiply by 2, subtract 5, we would add 5, and divide by 2. So we have had a taste of inverses from first semester. Okay, we'll refresh our memory on some notations and things. Find the inverse of this mapping. Let's say that this function, these are the elements of the domain. If I pick a state, that's the elements of the domain, each one of those elements in the domain is mapped to one element of the range. This is a one-to-one -one function because it's true in both directions. Each x has only one y, and each y has only one x. Okay, let's map the inverse of that function. Notice the domain for the inverse is the range of the original function. So this will be a population for my inputs will map to a state. And then this domain becomes the range of the inverse. And the inverse reverses the operation of the original function. Alrighty, we can look at functions in another way. We can represent a function. I did condense your notes when I made a, copy, a PDF of your notes just so it could fit onto two pages for your printing. So mine looks a little bit more spread out than yours. They're the same. Let's say this is a function for each input there is only one output, oops, and the reverse is true as well. For each output, there is exactly one input. So this is a one-to-one -one function. The inverse then, if you remember, reverses the domain and range. So an ordered pair on the inverse will be negative 27, negative 3, negative 8, negative 2, negative 1, negative 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 8, 2, and 27, 3 would be ordered pairs on the inverse. What's the domain? Notice the domain of the inverse is the set of x values. I'd probably just list them in order. Negative 27, negative 8, negative 1, 0, 1, 8, and 27. And the range of the function becomes the domain of the inverse and vice versa, the domain of the function becomes the range of the inverse and the range from decrease from smallest to largest. Alrighty, just a couple of reminders again. I condensed your notes just a little bit so yours is spread out differently. Uh, let's see, that's a reminder. The domain of the original function becomes is the range of the inverse and vice versa. The range of a function becomes the domain in the inverse. That's switching. Okay, this is an important test to confirm that a function is an inverse of the other. If I plug x into a function and then plug that output into its inverse, that composition of functions, if I simply get that input out, then those two functions are inverses. Likewise, if I plug a x value into an inverse, I get that output becomes an input into the function. And if I simply get that same input out, then those functions are undoing each other. Okay, so we can remind ourselves that the inverse of a function undoes 
the operations of a function. Okay, so that's that undoing the operations. <clears throat> you remember this from um, inverse functions, the graph of a one-to-one -one function f and the graph of its inverse, f inverse, are always symmetric, and we always have that symmetry across the line y equals f. Remember the switching? If I have an ordered pair a1, b1 on a function, then I switch the inputs and outputs. b1, a1 is on the inverse. If I have an ordered pair a2, b2 on original function, because of the switching of the domain and range, b2, a2 will be on the inverse. And I always have that symmetry across that line y equals x. Okay, this is important uh, to verify two functions are inverses of each other. Let's say g of x is equal to x cubed, g inverse of x is equal to the cubed root of x. You can probably see that those undo the operations of each other. But in order to verify that two functions are inverses of each other, we show them both. We show that g composed of g inverse is really just x, and g inverse of g of x also gives us x, and they undo the operations of each other. Okay, let me plug in here. g composed of, what was g inverse? Cubed root of x, our composition of functions, which is the same as, I'm going to plug cubed root of x into g of x, so that becomes, wherever I see an x, I'm going to put the cubed root of x cubed, those undo each other, and I am simply left with x. And we show the other direction. g inverse of g of x, what was g of x? x cubed, which is, now I'm going to plug x cubed into this function g of x, which is the cubed root of x cubed. Those certainly undo each other, and I'm left with x. So yes, I have confirmed that g and g inverse are undoing each other. They're inverses of each other. That case almost might have been too simple. Let's look at that next case and verify, if you would. Okay, these are two more complicated functions, but let's verify that they are inverses of each other. I'm going to show that f composed of f inverse really just gives me x, and I'm going to show that f inverse composed of f of x also gives me x, and those functions undo each other. However, for a more complicated function, for what values of x is this true? Alrighty, let's start to verify. So this becomes f composed of f inverse, and f inverse is 1 over x plus 1. That becomes, I'm going to plug this function into f, so wherever I see an x, Oops, I'm going to stop right here. Notice that the domain of that inner function, x cannot equal what? Makes no sense to go any further if x is equal to 0. Otherwise, that, domain, that denominator is undefined. Or that fraction, I should say, is undefined because the denominator is 0. Okay, so as long as x is not equal to 0, I'm fine. Now I'm going to plug this whole function into f, which becomes 1 over... Wherever I see an x, I'm going to plug in 1 over x plus 1 minus 1. Those are gone. I'm left with 1 over 1 over x, which is 1 times the reciprocal of the denominator, which is x. All right, so that does equal x uh, as long as x is not equal to 0. Okay, let's confirm going the other direction. They both have to undo each other to be inverses. So let's see, this becomes f inverse of my function f of x, which was 1 over x minus 1. This becomes, whoopsies, what's the domain of this composed function? Notice makes no sense to go any further if x is equal to what? The domain of that inner function Denominator cannot equal 0, set it equal to 0, and x cannot equal 1. Okay, so let's clear that up right away. Now I'm going to plug this function into f inverse, wherever I see an x, 
1 over, I'm going to plug in that whole function, 1 over x minus 1 plus 1, which is the same as, I'm going to take that numerator, multiply it by the reciprocal of the denominator, plus 1, which gives me x minus 1 plus 1, which is simply just x, as long as x is not equal to 1. All right? And they are inverses of each other. They undo the operations of each other. Remember, we can take a graph. Let's say that this is a function. First of all, is it a function? Yes. That graph passes the vertical line test. Is this a one-to-one -one function? Yes, it passes the horizontal line test. Can you sketch the graph of the inverse? I'll pause. Okay, when functions are inverses, the domain of one becomes the range of the other. So I'm going to make that negative two an element of the range. And the range of one becomes the domain of the others. And I get that switching of the ordered pairs. So I'm going to switch that domain and range, and I get an ordered pair negative one, negative two on the inverse switch 0, negative 1, and I get, I'm sorry, switch negative 1, 0, and I get 0, negative 1, and when I reverse 2, 1, I get the ordered pair 1, 2. I'm going to connect those. And this is my original function f of x, and this is my inverse function f inverse. Do you see the symmetry? Across that line, y equals x. And there we go. If that was too easy, let me ask you one last question in this case that we have. Okay, here's three functions, f of x, g of x, and h of x. For which one of these will the inverse also be a function? Where it passes the, the function needs to pass the vertical line test and the horizontal line test so that its inverse will be a function. Which one of those has an, in, an inverse that is actually a function? Alrighty, g of x is the only one of these three that passes both the vertical line test and the horizontal line test. We're going to sketch g of x and sketch g inverse of x. Okay, I'll pause while you remember how to sketch a square root function shifted 3 to the left. Okay, here's my ordered pairs. If I shift 3 to the left, it's that hook function, 1, 2, 3. And then I can go over 1, square root of 1 is 1. Over 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, square root of 4 is 2. So I can get some key points on that square root function. There's my function g of x. Simply reverse those ordered pairs, and you'll get a nice graph of g inverse. Uh, our, our, our next class together, we're going to have a nice algebraic way to find that inverse. But right now, I'm just going to reverse those ordered pairs. Alrighty, there is my original function g of x. I reverse negative 3, 0 to 0, negative 3. I reverse negative 2, 1 to 1, negative 2. And I reversed 1, 2 to the ordered pair 2, 1. And you can see that symmetry right along the line y equals x. Alright, thanks for the review of some inverse functions. Again, next class we will find an algebraic way to find the inverse of that function, which will be very convenient. Alrighty, thanks for working through some homework, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.